This video is a tutorial for iMovie on the iPad. More specifically, it's actually part two. Last year, I released a video tutorial which covered, at the time, all of the features available to use on the app. And since then, several new features have been introduced. If you haven't seen part one yet, it's definitely worth checking out that video first because it really covers all the features and all the capabilities of what the app can do. If you've watched that video already, or if you feel like you're pretty competent with iMovie on the iPad, then let's get started with this new video and some of the new features that are now available. So firstly, one of the new features we're going to talk about is the ability to import videos directly from an SD card or an external drive. So I've got an SD card connected to my iPad at the moment, so I want to import footage straight from there. So to do that, we're going to click the plus icon in the top right corner of the screen. And this is where we can find all of our footage or all of our media. So this panel is in two sections. We've got media and then we've got audio and audio we're going to come to in just a little bit. So some of the options we've seen in the last tutorial video, which is basically importing from the camera roll and some of these are divided up into moments, video, photos and albums. But one of the ones we didn't discuss last time was files. So you can import directly from the files app or from iCloud Drive. But we can actually use this to import footage directly from the SD card or external drive. So with this window open, I'm just going to go to locations. And we can see that my memory card is, has been found on this panel here. So I'm just going to click through to that. And then I've got my folders to go through. So I'm going to find a video. Now you'll notice that there's quite a lot of stuff greyed out that you can't actually click on. These are images. So the only things we can import directly from an SD card are videos themselves. So I want to choose this video here. And it will start copying it from the SD card straight into iMovie. So when the video is finished importing, you've got a few options. You can cancel it if you did it by mistake. You can add it straight into the movie. And what I'll do is I'll add that video to the end of my current sequence. Or you can choose more. And under that menu contains things like split screen, cutaways, or picture in picture. I'm just going to add it just for the moment straight to the end of the movie. And here is the footage here. Another feature that was introduced into iMovie was the ability to make use of footage that contains green screen. So that allows to strip out the background from that video and overlay it on top of this one. So first of all, what I'm going to do is just import some footage that has a green screen element to it. So I'm just going to go to files and I've got this video here, which is basically a subscribe button. So I'm going to choose that. And again, this menu comes up, add to movie, more or cancel. Now this time I'm going to choose more. And you can see all the different elements, all the different options we've got here. And one of them is called green or blue screen. So I'm going to choose that one. And what it does is it overlays the footage on top. And now you'll notice it's already taken the green color straight out of the video automatically. You don't need to do anything. However, you can tweak the settings because on occasions you won't always get it right. So I'm just going to click on this footage here. And you'll notice some buttons appear over the top, which allows you to change some settings. If I click reset over here in the top left, it goes back. It just shows me all the green footage. I'm going to choose auto because that did a pretty good job. And then over here, we've got some settings. We can adjust the strength um, and the second button here allows us to drag in the corners to exclude an area. So there's a part of the footage where the green screen hasn't quite worked or there's something you didn't want in the footage. You can actually just drag in these parts here and it will get rid of any extra footage. I don't have any, but you'll notice when I scroll along, the mouse gets cut off. So I'm actually, I don't need that. So I'm just going to undo that. Now you'll notice this subscribe button is huge. It's right in the middle of the screen and usually you wouldn't want it like that. You'd want it smaller and off in one corner. Now in iMovie, you would use picture in picture mode to do that, to make it smaller and move it wherever you want it to go. 
However, you can't use picture in picture mode and green screen at the same time, which is quite an annoying limitation of iMovie. And it's something that I hope Apple do take seriously and fix at some point. So there is a way around it, which would involve creating a second iMovie file just for this subscribe button using picture in picture to make it smaller, put it in one corner of the screen, add a green background that color matches to the rest of the footage and then putting that in to this project. It really shouldn't be that difficult and take so long. But unfortunately, that's the only way around it at the moment. Now, another new feature that was introduced was soundtracks and sound effects. So on this import menu over here, we're just going to choose audio. And the first option is called soundtracks and iMovie now contains loads and loads of different pieces of music for lots of different moods. And you can download each one and import it into your footage. You can download all of the soundtracks straight away by clicking this cloud icon in the top right corner that will download everything. And if you want to preview a track, you can simply click on it. Click on it again to stop until you find the soundtrack that you're looking for. And once you're happy with that, you can click the plus icon to add it to your movie. So if we go back to this audio menu, the second option is my music. And this allows you to import music straight from Apple Music or Apple Music Library. Now, what you must do first is open Apple Music and download any tracks that you want to use first for offline listening. You can't just search all of Apple Music through this interface. So you can go to a category, choose an album, choose a song and import it. Just be careful because most music is copyrighted and therefore if you was to upload that publicly to YouTube or Facebook, your video might get taken down. Back on the audio menu, the third option is for sound effects. So iMovie now contains loads and loads of different sound effects, which you can really easily import. You can click on the plus icon to add it to your footage. A bit of a weird mix there. So what we're going to do next is add a logo to this footage because iMovie now lets you use images that contain transparent backgrounds, for example, PNG files. So I'm going to go back to my media menu. So I've already downloaded this PNG file, which is a picture of some popcorn. And when I import it into iMovie, this white background we can see here isn't going to show up, it will disappear. So I'm going to click on it once. Now, if I click on the plus icon, what that's going to do is add it to the end or the beginning of my movie. That's not what I want. I want to add it over the top. So if I want to add it over the top, I have to click on the three dots. Now, because this is an icon, I don't want to take up the whole screen. I only want to use it on the corner of a screen. I'm going to make use of picture in picture to achieve this. So I'm going to choose this one. And as you can see, my popcorn icon is now over here. If I want to move this icon, I can click on the image on my timeline. And as we can see over the top of our movie preview, we've got a few different options. This one with the arrows allows me to move it to a different part of the screen. Picture in picture mode can also be used for video. So I can choose a short video clip by tapping on it and I need to choose the three dots again and then choose picture in picture. The footage is overlaid over the top and you can see both videos playing at the same time. And once again, I can click on this video icon, click on the arrows and I can move it around. 
Now there's two other things I want to show you. First of all, you can see there's this white border around the edge. If I don't want that there, I can choose this bottom icon that's overlaid over the video and then that disappears. And then the top icon is for zoom. Now I don't have to display all of the video that's on show. You'll notice when I click it, it says pinch to zoom. So if I use a two finger gesture on a trackpad or on the iPad, I can actually zoom in on the video, move it around and only show a segment of the video in picture in picture mode. Now the next feature I'm going to show you is called Cutaway. This allows me to switch to a different clip really easily. Now in the past, what you could have done is split the existing clip in half and then take the footage and put it in the middle. But you don't actually have to do that. Select the place where you want your Cutaway to start. Choose your picture or your video. Choose the three dots and then choose Cutaway. Now you'll notice without splitting the video up or doing any kind of cropping or trimming, I've put this over the top. So instead of overlaying one thing on top of the other, it switches completely to my other picture or my other clip. Next, I'm going to show you how to do some work with photos, maybe to create a photo slideshow. Just like before, we can import a picture and this time we're just going to click the plus icon to add it straight into our clip. Now you'll notice as I scrub along the timeline the photo actually moves. This is called the Ken Burns effect. If I click on the picture you can see I've got Ken Burns enabled. Now I can disable it completely and therefore the picture will no longer move. If I select the picture again, using a trackpad or two fingers on the iPad, I can zoom and move the picture around to get the crop that I want. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to enable the Ken Burns effect again and show you the two icons above it. Now at the moment, it's zooming a little bit but actually I want it to zoom some more. So with the clip selected, I'm going to choose the starting position by clicking on this first icon and then using the trackpad or two fingers on the iPad to choose my starting position. And then I'm going to choose the end position by clicking the second icon. This reflects what we want the end of the clip to look like. So this time I'm going to zoom in scroll up and have it focus on the top of the image. And now when I scroll along, I've been able to customize this Ken Burns effect. If you want to slow that effect down, you can extend the length of the clip by clicking on it and dragging this yellow handle. So now the length of the photo in the video is longer and the Ken Burns effect is therefore slower. <music> iMovie now lets you make use of keyboard shortcuts to make your workflow even quicker. So I'm going to talk you through some of my favorite shortcuts that I use when I'm editing movies in iMovie. First of all, by pressing the space bar, I can play the selected clip. I can press space bar again to stop. Now, instead of making use of the undo and redo button, I can use command and Z to undo, command shift and Z to redo. If I press command and the plus icon, I can zoom in on the timeline to get a closer look at the footage. And if I press command and the minus symbol, I can zoom out on the timeline. If 
if I want to cut a video into two segments, I can move the playhead to where I want the cut to occur and then press Command and B to split the clip. If I want to get a good look at the audio on my movie, I can press Control and S. This allows me to see the waveform for the video and any audio files I have playing underneath it. I can press Control and S to hide it again. If I want to mute a video clip, I can tap on it to select it and then press Command, Shift and M to mute it. If I want to unmute the clip, I can simply press Command, Shift and M once again. If I hold down the Shift key and use either the right or the left arrow keys, I can move forwards or backwards by 10 frames. If you want to see what keyboard shortcuts are available, simply hold down the Command key. This displays many of the keyboard shortcuts available to you. So that's it for this video, which is part two of the iMovie tutorial series. If you found this video useful, please like, comment and subscribe. And I'll be back soon with some more video tutorials.